Hi, my name is Eric Ryan Solberg, and this is 7 Minute Sermon. Tonight is, appropriately enough, going to be about being thankful since tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Before I get into the message, I just want to wish you and your family all the best blessings for a happy, healthy, and safe holiday season, and wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a perfect reminder of a condition that we should have at every time in our lives as believers who have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and even as non-Christians. But especially, it's especially paramount for people who are believers in Jesus Christ to have a thankful heart, and uh, not just once a year, but every day, even in the midst of our earth earthly circumstances. And that's going to be the focus of tonight's message. Tonight's message is going to be off the cuff. I don't have any prepared notes, so I'm going to hope the Holy Spirit gives me the words to speak, and something I say might resonate with you. Thanks again for listening, and here's tonight's seven-minute sermon. Tonight's main verse comes from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. It says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And I want to focus in on verse 18. Give thanks in all circumstances. Because I could that, that could be the end of the sermon right there. Give thanks in all circumstances, no matter what. In all circumstances. Not in some circumstances, not only when it's easy, but give thanks in all circumstances. So I want to address tonight, number one, why is it important that we do? And number two, what does it look like? Number one, it's important that we give thanks in, in all of our circumstances, even if our earthly circumstances are difficult. Because when we don't, when we choose to view our earthly circumstances with resentment, whether it's towards God or towards somebody else, or when we choose to be unhappy or to not be thankful or to get frustrated in whatever's going on in our lives here on earth, we let the devil, we let Satan have power over us. There's nothing Satan loves more than when a believer turns away from God because of tough things they're going through on this earth. Now, if you're asking me, how is that possible? How can I be thankful always? Especially when we live in a fallen, sinful world where calamities can strike at any moment, as it talks about in Ecclesiastes. When, when we're facing things like death, when we're facing things like um, loss of a job, when we're facing things like divorce or troubled relationships, when we're facing something like an injury, maybe career-ending in athletics, or the end of a career, or whatever you're facing in life that maybe it's just maybe it's one big thing, or maybe it's just a lot of little things that have added up and nothing seems to be going right, and you're like, what do I have to be thankful for? Let me tell you, this book, the Bible, is what you have to be thankful for. It's the good news and living word of God that says that God said His only begotten Son to die for your sins, that you may not perish but have eternal life. That's good news. That's what you're supposed to be thankful for. You're supposed to be thankful in that regardless of your earthly circumstances. But how do you do that? Well, the key is kind of in the first two uh, verses of that three-verse segment in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. The first one says, rejoice always. What does rejoice look like? It means consider your trials nothing but joy. That's what it says in James chapter 1. I encourage you to read that. It means when you're going through something, understand that it's going to make you more mature and it's going to work out not only for God's glory, but for your benefit, even if you don't understand it. And it all goes back to that, that verse in Jeremiah, which says that God has a plan for your life. To give you a future with hope, it's not a plan for harm. I kind of paraphrase that verse, but you get the gist of it. And that's the greatest news, is that, that God's not going to harm you. He says, he writes in First uh, First Corinthians, that no testing is overtaking that's uncommon to man, that he will not provide a way out for you. Those are supremely important verses to, to understand and recognize. That despite whatever you're going through, whatever hardship you're going through, the good news is we already know the final score. This isn't like watching your favorite team who's winning at halftime and wondering if they're going to be able to hold on and finish off the game. No. This is like a Quentin Tarantino movie where we already know the end of this. this we already know the final score. If God, Jesus won, death in the grave, sin, power, Satan, nothing. We know the final score. Christ has triumphed over death in the grave, and that should be enough as, our, as believers to be thankful always. And that really starts with the second part of that, which is praying without ceasing. It's hard when we're going through something to be thankful if we're not engaged in prayer and we're not engaged in God's Word. So I really want to encourage you, whenever you face those trials, whenever you face something bad here in this earth that makes you not want to be thankful, because let's be honest, being thankful isn't always natural. It's easy for us to get mired in whatever earthly circumstance we're going through and face it negatively. This is as convicting for me as it is for anybody else. This is something I need to work on just as much as anybody else does. 
this can, you know, it's something that every Christian struggles with is being thankful when it doesn't, excuse me, when it's not easy. And it starts with that personal relationship with Jesus, drawing closer to Him so He'll draw closer to you, becoming less so you can become more. And understanding that His plan for your life is a good one. That Jesus overcame death in the grave. And that's why you should be thankful no matter what you're going through. Bad things happen to good people in this world, and it's tough to understand. And I want to say sometimes it's not always easy. You know, there's some real um, psychological problems out there like depression, and, and I want to encourage you, if you're going through that, to get that checked out. And, and I'm not trying to undervalue me medicine, because I think it can be effective for treatment of depression and psychological disorder, but sometimes you really just need to understand that Jesus has this. He's got this. And so I just want to challenge you to not just be thankful on Thanksgiving, not just post a thankful Facebook message or Twitter post on Thanksgiving, but to be thankful always. And it's to be especially thankful when the ball doesn't bounce your way. When you're going through that trial and you don't even can't even see the light at the end of that dark time. That's the time where it's especially important to be thankful. Because if you aren't, it gives Satan control of your life. And there's nothing more than Satan likes than a believer who turns their heart away from God and chooses not to be thankful in their trial. That's this week's seven minute sermon. Sorry if that was a little bit off the cuff. Just kind of tried to speak from the heart there and um, try to encourage you guys to be thankful always. Um, and I just think that's really important. And it's something that's a challenge to me just as much as a challenge to you guys. I just want to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy the time with your family. Um, and I'll see you next week uh, on 7 Minutes Sunday. Until then, remember, live in the world, but not of the world. Peace. Later.